This program is about restoring dignity, human dignity. They are no longer in a shadow. Through the program, they begin to realize their self-worth. If somebody feels good about themselves, they know that they can make it, you know, you light a fire. To see that change, that transformation in a period of time of only 18 months is phenomenal. We have seen it happen. We have seen them get out of poverty and we know it's possible. Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Three quarters of the Haitian people live in poverty, four out of eight million in extreme poverty, most of them in the rural areas. Foncose has been working across Haiti for over a decade, but a few years ago they found that traditional microfinance wasn't getting to people living in extreme poverty. I had just assumed that we were reaching the poorest people, but I discovered when we finally had the opportunity to do the research that in fact we were not. Eradicating extreme poverty needed a new approach. So Foncose created Chemin Lavimio, a program that deliberately selects the poorest, most vulnerable and isolated women, people with few assets, little income, poor housing and no hope. The Creole name for the program means pathway to a better life and it's the first step in their journey out of extreme poverty. You gotta be careful going down here. We crossed the river at Boucon Carré with Gautier and S. S grew up here in the Central Plateau and he's now a case manager for Chemin Lavimio. He works with 50 families and visits them every week, crossing the river in a carved out log and walking for hours. Merci beaucoup. The journey out of extreme poverty begins with some basic assets like goats and chickens, free health care, and a weekly stipend of 300 gourds or about $7. Not enough to live on, but just enough to ease the desperate daily search for food. S will use the visit to check on the health of the animals, make sure the water filter is being used, and talk to the member about health and shelter. Zetrain Joseph has been looking after her grandchildren since their parents died a few years ago. She used to beg for food in the local town to feed them. The boys heard about the program and persuaded her to join, and she's now been in it since May. She wants them to go to school, but it's hard to think about tomorrow when it rained last night. When it rains, it rains right in the house, and I sleep right in the mud, and there's nobody else to help. <laughs> the next day, we crossed the river further up. Many of the women are so poor when they start the program that they've never actually handled bills or notes. So learning to manage small amounts of money is a key part of their journey to self-sufficiency. Saving, and later borrowing, will help them in their income-generating activities as they build their small businesses. <laughs> <laughs> Elmina Bousquet was forced to give up two of her nine children to servitude in Port-au-Prince a year ago because she couldn't afford to feed them. Now she's three months into the program and the two girls, aged 12 and 13, have just returned home. And Elmina is confident that she'll be able to support them. She's just sold her first goats and bought a pony. Now she's learning to write her name. I would like to learn to read and write, because if you don't learn to read and write, you're nothing. Chemin <laughs> Lavimio isn't just designed to meet basic needs, but in the same 18-month period to build skills the women can use to develop livelihoods and support their families. <laughs> It's a whole new way of looking at the problem of poverty. It's about guidance. It's about teaching them how to use whatever we have given to them for them to be able to make it grow. Friday is market day in Boucon Cache. Merlin Thomas graduated from Chemin Lavimio just nine months ago, and already things are changing. 
Merlin is finding the pathway to a better life for her family by growing and trading vegetables. The sweet potato, what did you do? Bought it or is it from your own yard? I bought them. I bought a load and separated out the small ones to sell here. And the big ones, I sent to sell in Port-au-Prince. <laughs> yeah, you are very smart. <laughs> when we graduate them, we don't leave them. They're graduating to the next level of the program where they're going to continue to be accompanied. Merlin is moving to the next step of Foncose's ladder out of poverty, making her first repayment on a microfinance loan. And now she's looking forward to building her business and her family's future. When I started with the program, I was not even on the ladder. Now, I'm on the ladder, and I feel good. I want to advance, to continue, to come to my meetings regularly, to pay on time, to keep my promises, to move forward and not backwards. When they're ready to graduate, they always say they want to thank Foncoze, they want to thank Gautier, they want to thank me for all that we've done. And I always say to them, you are the ones who had the courage to make this leap, to change your life this way. And that's a very, very difficult thing to do. So you need to be congratulating yourselves because it takes an incredible amount of courage. And that's, I think, what sustains me is to see how much they want it and how much they're willing to invest in getting it. We want to be able to scale this program up. My ambition is that we eliminate this kind of poverty in Haiti because it is possible and then that we document for the rest of the world that it can in fact be done.